Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the 42nd Pi Game tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a pause screen that doesn't necessarily clean the screens um, before it so you can see uh, where your snake is during the pause. And then as well uh, as doing that, we're also going to modify the game over screen. And probably the game over screen modification is more important than the pause screen modification because when you pause the game, sometimes people pause the game to like let their mind catch up or something so in some games you wouldn't want to allow them to pause and like see where everything is maybe um but at least for game over a lot of people aren't necessarily totally for sure memorizing every time they get a point so they might not have looked at their score recently or something they get a game over and they're not really sure like what their score even was what happened maybe and that and so on so uh, we're at, we're going to show here how we could uh, write some logic to handle these uh, situations. So first of all, uh, the first thing that we're going to edit is the pause screen. So in theory, all we would need to change is we could just get rid of game display .fill white, right? We could just comment that out. So let's see what happens when we do that, though. So welcome, press C to play, we're playing, we get an apple, and we hit P for pause. And it may be really difficult to see it on my screen, but maybe on yours you'll be able to see it. But the text looks a little funky. Like, we'll, like the first time through it looks okay, but then it starts to like, I don't know, get all grainy or something. And the reason why that's happening is it's literally just like pasting the same message over and over, um, however many frames per second pause was, how many was it? Uh, it's five frames a second. So five of these messages to the screen are getting pasted, uh, and that's not necessarily what we intend. So what we will do instead is we can just uh, do the following. So before we get to wow paused, well, we called pause for a specific reason, right? We, they pressed P. So instead what we could do is we could just take this all right here and then do control X to cut it and then come above the while loop and basically underneath pause equals true, hit paste. And then let's highlight all the way up to message to screen because this is indented a little bad. Hold control and opening brackets to shift it over. And that should be it. Now what's gonna happen is it will just put this message up to the screen one time and then it will just run the event loop only, like basically the listener for an event. It, that's all that's going to run. So it's not going to keep throwing up graphics. So let's run that again real quick uh, just to see what I mean. C to play, we'll grab an apple, P to pause. And now you see how our text is still smooth. So again, on my screen, you might not have been able to notice it, but I think probably if you did it on yours, you saw that it just the lines weren't as smooth as it kept pasting up over and over and over all of the information. So anyway, that's how we can fix the pause screen, but we still have a problem of game over. It clears everything. So now let's modify the game over functionality to sh still show us the score and the apple and what happened to our snake. So close out of this, uh, we'll hit OK. And now we want to find game over. So we're just going to, it's in the game loop at least. And then, so this is while game over equals true. And then it runs all of this stuff, right? And um, basically what we would want to do is instead of while game over equals true, we could first ask a question uh, if game over equals true. Um, and then we could say, um, well, we could get rid of the game display.fill white. And then we could take this stuff right here, again, cut. And this time we shouldn't have to modify anything, I don't think, but paste it there. And that's really it. So it's quickly just going to run this, this, this if statement here. And since it will ring true one time, it's just going to run it one time and we'll display this. Um, now the problem might, well, it'll, it'll then just enter this while loop and that should be totally fine. Let's go ahead and run that and make sure that that's not still pacing, but that should cover it. So C to play, we'll go ahead and grab an apple and then boom, we're off the screen. And so we see that we can still see our apple now and we can still see the score um, and all that. And it's not like repeating itself. Let's go ahead and press C, that worked out, cool. Um, let's do that, Q to quit this time. 
Okay. So it appears that everything is is working now. And at this point, I think that, you know, we've had a few points where we've, um, you know, had a working snake game and we've been kind of happy. At this point, I'm really not sure what else we would possibly add to our little slither game here. Um, so I think now what would be best is to start a new game and this time make it a slightly more complex game. So snake is pretty basic. Um, we just have some simple commands for the user to put in and that's about it. There's only one little element here. It's very easy to create event handling because there's not too much going on here. So what I'd like to do is kind of step it up a little bit and make a more intermediate game. So Snake is a very basic game and so now I'd like to make a slightly more intermediate game um, to continue working on uh, our Pi game skills. So uh, with that, that's what we're going to be doing in the, uh, the next few videos. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, hopefully you, you're proud of your Snake game. And uh, stay tuned to the next video. Thanks for watching.